Today we're going to do section 5.4, eigenvectors and linear transformations. Let V be an n-dimensional vector space, W be an m-dimensional vector space, and T any other linear transformation from V to W. Let B and C be ordered basis for V and W respectively. Let vector X be in V. So here we have the multiplication by M, and that gives us a transformation. Here, let B be the basis um, B1 to Bn, and let vector x relative to basis B be R1 to Rn. Then because T is a linear transformation, T of vector x, we have T equals R1 times B1 all the way to R1, Rn times Bn. We can go ahead and distribute that T through, and then we have the transformation T on vector x relative to basis C equal in that. So our transformation of vector x relative to basis C is equal to um, M, the matrix for T, relative to B. The matrix M is called the matrix for T relative to the basis B and C. If W and V are the same and B and C are the same, then M is called the matrix for T relative to B, or simply the B matrix T. Example one, let B be B1 and B2, be a basis for V, and C, C1, C2, C3, be a basis for W. And let T map V onto W, be a linear transformation such that T of B1 equals 3C1 minus 2C2 plus 5C3, and T of B2 be 4C1 plus 7C2 minus C3. Find the matrix M for T relative to B and C. So the C-coordinate vectors of the images of B1 and B2 are as follows. So this is the C-coordinate vectors of the images of B1 and B2 are so it would be your coefficients so we would have 3 negative 2 and 5 for B1. And then you would do the same thing for B2. And that would be 4, 7, negative 1. So M would become 3, negative 2, 5. And then 4, 7, negative 1. This is the B matrix for T. Example two, let the mapping of T from P2 to P2 be defined as T of um, A sub zero plus A1 T plus A2 T squared equals A1 plus 2 A2 T. Verify that T is a linear transformation. Find the B matrix for T when B is the standard basis for P2. And verify that the transformation of P relative to B equals the transformation of relative to B times P relative to B for each P in P2. So first A, our transformation of 0 equals 0. So T of C times U plus D times V equals C of TU plus D of T of V. B, verify, um, find the B matrix for T. So here we would have T1, T of T, and T of T squared. So here we would have 0, 0, 0, because this would be T of 1, and 
for all of those, we have zero. And then we would have one, zero, zero for T. And then zero, two, zero. And that would equal B. So remember that this is our transformation of a one, our transformation of t and our transformation of t squared. And t of one equals zero because it's the zero polynomial. t of t equals one, a polynomial whose value is one. And t of t squared equals two t. And then c, we need um, to verify that T of P relative to B equals A1, 2A2, and A0. And how we would do that We would now find the transformation relative to B times um, P of B, and this would equal 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 2, 0 times A0, A1, A2. And when you multiply that out, you would get A1, 2, A2, and 0. So they, we verified that because they equal each other. Let's look at example three. Find t of a0 plus a1t plus a2t squared. If t is a linear transformation from p2 to p2 whose matrix relative to b is 1t t squared, is our, um, this equal to this? And what we would do is we would go ahead and find our transformation of p relative to b we can have that equal t relative to b times our vector p relative to b. And since t relative to b is equal to 3, 0, 1, 4, 5, negative 2, 0, negative 1, 7, and p is a0, a1, a2, we would then go ahead and multiply that. And you'd get 3a0 plus 4a1. Then you'd have 5a1 minus a2. And then a0 minus 2a1 plus 7a2. So our transformation of P. would be 3a0 plus 4a1 plus 5a1 minus a2 times t plus a0 minus 2a1 plus 7a2 times t squared. Theorem eight, the diagonal matrix representation. Suppose A equals P, D, P inverse, where D is a diagonal N by N matrix. If B is the basis for Rn, for, from, form from the columns of P and D is the B matrix for the transformation um, vector X to A of X. Let's look at example four to find our transformation from R2 to R2 by T of X equals A of X where A is that matrix and find a basis B for R2 such that the B matrix for T is diagonal. 
So the first thing that we're going to have to do here is we need to find our lambda values. So we need to find the determinant of A minus lambda I. And that would be the determinant of 7 minus lambda 2, negative 4, 1 minus lambda. This would give us 7 minus lambda times 1 minus lambda minus or plus 8 equals 0. Multiplying this out, we get lambda squared minus 8 lambda plus 15 equals 0. And when we factor that, we get lambda minus 3 times lambda minus 5 equals 0. So my lambda values are 3 and 5. So we need to go ahead and find, um, solve for our eigenvalues of lambda equals 5 and 3. So when I have lambda equals 3, I need to solve a minus 3i times x equals 0. So I'd have 4 minus 4. 2, negative 2, 0, 0. When I row reduce that, I get 1, 1 half, 0, 0, 0, 0. So here I would have x equals negative one-half x2 and x2. Which would equal x2 times negative one-half and one. I have to do the same thing for lambda equals five. So I have to solve a minus five i times x equals zero. And so when I subtract 5i from a, I get 2, negative 4, 2, negative 4, 0, 0. When I row reduce this, I end up getting 1, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0. So x would equal negative x2 and x2, which would just be x2 times negative one and one. So this would give me my P. So P using the first, um, if we called this V1, I would have negative one half one. And then negative one one, this is my B matrix. And I would then write this B as negative one one or negative one half one and negative one one. And my diagonal D using those lambda values would be three zero zero five. Remember, order is not important for this one, but order is important for D. Since this came from my, my lambda value of three, that would be three. Since this became from my lambda value of 5, this one would be 5. And you would do that no matter how many you would have. It would become a bigger matrix. The last thing you have to verify, does AP equal DP? And it does if you went through and did it. Similarity of matrix representation. If A is similar to C, with A equals P, C, P inverse, then C is the B matrix for the transformation of vector X um, into A times X, where the basis B is formed from the columns of P. If my transformation from Rn to Rn is defined by T of X equals A of X, then, and if my B is any basis Rn, then the B matrix for T is similar to A. In fact, if P is B1 all the way to Bn, then my transformation relative to B B is P inverse A times P.
So let's look at example five. Let A be four, negative nine, four, negative eight, B one, B three, two, B two, B two, one. The characteristic polynomial of A is lambda minus two squared, but the eigenspace for, for the eigenvalue negative two is only one dimensional. So A is not diagonalizable. However, the basis B, B1 and B2 has the property that B matrix for the transformation X into A of X is a triangular matrix called the Jordan form of A. Find the B matrix. So first we have P would be 3, 2, 2, 1. So I have to find P inverse, which would be negative 1, 2, 2, negative 3. So my transformation relative to B would be P inverse A times P. So P inverse would be negative 1, 2, 2, negative 3. A would be 4, 4, negative 9, 8. And P is 3, 2, 2, 1. You first want to multiply these. When I multiply that out, I still have P inverse here. When I multiply those, I get negative 6, negative 4, negative 1, 0. And then when I multiply those, I get my diagonal matrix negative two zero one negative two